Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we understood what are the different transformations which we can do on a data frame. As a part of that, we understood we can do transformation by adding columns, by manipulating the columns. Let us see in detail how we can do the transformations put in into columns. One of the very important thing is we can add the columns. If I ask you a question, do you remember when have you added the columns implicitly in what are the lectures we have already gone through? If you remember, we added the columns with when we are trying to use a lit function. Implicitly, we have added the columns in multiple ways in the earlier lectures. Now, if you want to add a column explicitly in a formal way, we can use a with column. This will try to add a column to the Data frame. With column method, it takes two arguments. One is the column which you are trying to add, specify the name of that column. And the second one is the expression through which you want to add the column. So let us see that by an example. If you look at this example, as usual, you would have figured it out. Any of your statements mostly would start from a name of a data frame. The same is the case here as well. As I said, we are using a with column. This is the name of the new column which we are trying to add and this is the expression as we already discussed with the with column method we need to specify the name of a new column and also expression the expression can be as simple as this or we can have a bit more complex expression like this in this case we are using a with column method and the name of the new column is going to be within country. And the expression what we are trying to use is origin country name is equal to destination country. It is a bit complex than this particular expression. By using with column method, we can add the columns by giving a name of the column and also expression as two arguments. Now, again, as a part of the previous lectures, Somewhere you would have seen how do we rename the columns also. But if you really want to go formal way, explicit way, you can go ahead and use a with column renamed method. So here, all you have to do is take a data frame, use this method, and then specify the name of the column, original column in the data frame, and specify what is the name which you want that name to be changed to. With that, you will be able to change the name of the... We have added the columns. How do we really remove the columns? One of the way we have already done is by using a select method. For example, you have a data frame. The way you can do is go ahead and say select and say call and give the name of the column. By using this, you can select. Assuming this, this data frame has three columns and within that, you can go ahead and select only one column, you can remove the columns. But one more explicit way is use a drop method. Assuming that data frame has a three columns, now what we can do is we can use a drop on this data frame, this is a data frame and then specify the column which you want to drop. That way, out of these three columns, one column will be dropped. Assuming that you want to drop multiple columns, all you have to do is just mention the name of the columns which you want to drop separated by a comma. You will be able to drop the multiple columns as well. What happens is sometimes when you are dealing with the data, it so happens that you may have to change the data types of columns. In that case, we can go and do the casting. You have two columns. One column is string, another column is int. If you want to cache the or change the data type int to long, then you can use a cached method. Here, the way we are using this method is name of the data frame. Again, this is a data frame. This is an explicit way of adding the columns. Then you are specifying name of the new column. Then you will take count. This is a column and you're casting this to double instead of int r, you can cast it to long as well. This is the way you change the type of the columns by casting method. Sometimes if you 
observe this particular data frame. Any difference in this data frame? Just take a look at this. See, you have a name of a column properly. There is no gap. Same is the case here, but there is a gap here. Right? In these cases, when you are trying to access the columns without giving any escape character, you will not be able to access these columns as a part of the strings. How do we handle this? We can handle this by using a backtick character. Mostly what happens is when you are trying to deal with a huge amount of data, you have multiple columns, right? Some of the columns would have spaces. Maybe when you are trying to create the data frames, you are not able to handle them. When you are trying to manipulate them, when you are trying to use them as a part of your data engineering or a data analysis, what you can do is you can go ahead and use the escape character to try to access those columns. In this case, let us say we have a name of the data frame this is and we are using a select expression which we have already seen in the previous lecture. This particular column name has a spaces. If you don't use this back tick, you will not be able to access this column. It will throw a error message saying that this is not a valid column. Whenever there are spaces in the column names, go ahead and use the back tick characters. That's it. We'll see the practicals of all of these concepts. Let us see some action around data frame transformations in columns. One of the aspect is adding the columns. We have already understood we can add the columns with with column and it, it takes two arguments the column name and also the expression. Let us say dear flight and then I'll say with column method. Let us say to add one column to this data frame. I will say a new column and then expression expression can be anything. In this case, let us add your favorite number. My favorite number is five at the moment. Let's go ahead and see what did we add here. Let's execute this, putting this in PySpark terminal. There you go. We have added a new column. This is one way of looking at. So one more thing is that this is a very simple expression. Let us try to build one more thing with a bit complex expression. What we can do here is let us add domestic flight. I think we have seen already this example, but let us say domestic flight. If we can build an expression, XPR, take out this guy and take out this guy. Then we'll say destination country name is equal to origin country name. This should work here. The expression is bit complex as compared to the earlier one. Let us go ahead and see how this width column works here. See, there you go. Okay, you can see we added a column called domestic flight with the expression where wherever you have a destination country name is equal to origin country name, give us the Boolean value. It's a true or false. This is how you add the columns. The next one is how do you rename the column? The way we can rename the column is with a with column rename method. If you see here, we have three columns, destination country name, origin country name, and also the count. Now, let us go ahead and build a instruction for DF flight with column renamed. And then we have to first provide what is the column you want to rename. In this case, let us say destination country name. I want to rename to destination or something like that. Destination rename. So this is what let's go and execute this. I'm renaming a column. Okay, you can see column is renamed. That is how you rename the column. So once we have seen this, the next one is how do we remove the columns? We have already removed the columns by select method. For example, let us say DF flight. It is there somewhere here. So let me, we have already seen this. So in a way, we have removed the columns by a select method. So let us say in the, this particular DF flight data frame, we have three columns. Now we can select one of them and assign that to one more data frame. Let us say this one, let us take out this guy and instead of show, 
I'll say DF with one column. Okay, let's go and execute this. Okay, so DF with one one column D show let us only five. Let us uh, when we are trying to do this, should ensure that we are having a exact data frame. Out of the three columns, what the original data frame had, we selected only one column. In a way, we dropped two columns. One more way of dropping the columns explicitly by using a drop method. Let us try to see that. Let us say DF flight and we'll say drop. Drop whichever you want to drop. You want to drop origin country name. Then let's go ahead and see this. Show, let's go and execute this. We dropped one of the column that is origin container. If you want, you can drop one more column as well. For example, let us say, let us use the same code to drop the count as well. Go on, drop the count, dropping the count now. We drop the count as well. So out of the three columns, we have dropped the two columns. Okay, that is how you remove the columns as well. The next aspect is changing the column types. So what happens is sometimes when you create the data frames, a particular column will be in one data type. We can change the column type by using a cache method. Let us see how do we do that. So let's go here. First thing is let us try to see what are the DF flight dot. If we go and print the schema, let us see what are the. Okay, these are the schema here. This is the schema here. So now let us try to change the long data type of account to double. Let's do that now. First thing is let us say and df with cached so then what you can do is original flight original is df flight that's the one and we'll use the with column method and then we'll say count count cached what you can do is we have to give an expression remember with column takes two arguments one is the new column name and also the expression in this case say call count then cached we are casting it to double let us go and execute this it is so let us go and see df with cached what is the schema of this you can see the count casted is in double this is how if you want to change the data types of a column you can do by using a cached method that is the one thing the next one being as we have already discussed if there are any spaces in the column names so how do we do that? We have already seen we have to use a backtick. But let us see a couple of examples here. This is important because you may have columns with the spaces. I'll say DF with column space. I'll just create one data frame and I'll use the DF flight with column. I will say what I will do is I'll just give a the column name with space. I'll just say and what I will do is I'll just go ahead and assign EXPR our origin country name to this we are done what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and execute this i'm creating a one more data frame to just to demonstrate how do we work with the spaces so i created this pay this is done now what we are trying to do here is i'll show you this data frame oh you can see it here right so this particular column has spaces here now let us try to select this one and see what is happening. This one, I will select this. Select this guy. I'll give you. Pro I'll provide the this a column with the space. So select, and I will try to show it to you guys. Show some five. This one. Okay. This is the thing. And then let us execute this. Yes, it is executing. But if you want to select a column as a part of the expression that wouldn't work let us try that now take this same thing select expr let us see if it works or not it will not work it is giving us an error to come out of this to ensure that you are trying to use the columns with the spaces as a part of the expression all you have to do is fix this with a back tick that's what i am trying to do now now i am fixing this one See, it works now. Whenever you have a column to the spaces, this is how 
you take care of it i think we did cover all the aspects which are covered as a concept as a part of our hands on you do please practice to ensure that you are getting a mastery over this thank you mm-hmm.